Hello. Today we're delving into the second topic of this section, the magnetic force acting on moving charges. In this class, our focus will be on understanding how this force impacts charges in motion. By determining this force, we can effectively predict and analyze the trajectories of these charged particles. First, let's begin with a brief introduction. Following that, we'll explore the magnetic force affecting moving charges. To conclude, we'll see an example. When we explored the previous section on electrostatic fields, we observed that a charged particle within an electrostatic field was subject to a force. This time, we are going to introduce a new field, in this case, the magnetic field. Hence, we'll consider a region where both an electric field and a magnetic field exist, with direction and sense as depicted on the screens. The electric field is horizontal, directed to the right, while the magnetic field is vertical, directed upwards. Let's also consider that within this region, where these two fields are present, there's a charged particle moving at the velocity v. Experimentally, it's demonstrated that this charged particle will experience a force defined by the Lorentz force. There are two terms, an electric force term, which would be this one here, and a magnetic force term. The electric force, as discussed in the preceding section, was independent of V, and it was parallel to the electrostatic field. This force runs parallel to the field. In this topic, in this specific class, our focus will center on what are the implications of the magnetic force, and we're going to focus on this part. We've seen that the expression for magnetic force is Q, representing the charge of the particle multiplied by the vector product of V and B. It's important to recall that the vector product results from the right-hand rule, moving from the first vector to the second via the shortest path. What direction and sense is this force going to have? If the particle has a positive charge, if the charge is positive, V and B will have the same direction and sense as F. In any case, it will always have direction perpendicular to the plane determined by V and B, and sense equal to V and B if the charge is positive. In the case that the charge is negative, it will also have a direction perpendicular to the plane determined by the vectors V and B, but in the opposite sense to the product of V and B. Let's explore the characteristics of the magnetic force acting on a moving charge. Firstly, the magnetic force must be perpendicular to V. When it aligns perpendicularly, it is also perpendicular to the displacement. As work is defined as force times displacement, work becomes zero. Remember, work is also equivalent to the change in kinetic energy. Hence, if work is zero, the change in kinetic energy is also zero. Consequently, this force does not alter the particle's kinetic energy. It consistently remains perpendicular to V and naturally depends on the particle's velocity. What's the outcome? For a positive charge, the force aligns with the sense of V times B, while for a negative charge, it takes the opposite sense to V times B. Let's examine specific scenarios. If V aligns parallel to B, the force will be zero. Conversely, if V is perpendicular to B, the force's magnitude reaches its maximum value as the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. It's essential to note that the sine of an angle can at most be equal to 1. Let's see an example. The magnetic field at a point on the northern hemisphere of the Earth's surface is given as B equals 2 times 10 to the power of minus 5 J minus 6 times 10 to the power of minus 5 K in Teslas. This is expressed in a reference frame where the OX axis represents the west-east axis and the OY axis represents the south-north axis. Jota intends to conduct an experiment by launching protons into a 3-meter-long vacuum tube from the origin, directed along the OX axis at a velocity of 5 times 10 to the power of 5 meters per second. We need to depict the magnetic field, calculate the angle it forms with the OA axis, and determine the force acting on each proton when it's at the origin. 
The charge is specified as 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs, identical to the charge of an electron. Right, to address this, let's start by revisiting and reviewing the structure of the magnetic field in this context. Recall that the magnetic field emerges from the geographic south, aligning with the magnetic north, and converges into the geographic north, coinciding with the magnetic south. Now that we've reviewed and refreshed this concept, let's consider a point near the Earth's surface. While we've depicted it a bit farther in our illustration, in reality we're quite close to the Earth's surface within the northern hemisphere, as the statement specifies. The OX axis aligns with the direction of OE axis, implying that the OX axis should be tangential to a parallel. In a two-dimensional representation, this would appear as moving inward into the screen. Hence, we represent it with a cross symbol. The OY axis runs in the south-north direction, aligning tangentially with a meridian. If depicted in two dimensions, it would follow this direction and sense. All right, the Z axis will be given by the right-hand rule. OX axis, OY axis, the Z axis would extend out of the paper. How do we draw the magnetic field? Essentially, the magnetic field has to be tangent to the field lines. And so it's going to have to go in that direction. That was one of the things that we were asked to calculate. It has a positive component in the y-axis direction and a negative component in the z-axis direction in this scenario. We need to ascertain the angle it forms, which is given by the angle alpha. Right? Now that we've depicted the field, let's calculate the angle. Upon reviewing the given data, it indicates that the magnetic field had a component along the positive y-axis, as we have drawn our magnetic field, and the negative component along the OZ axis. Indeed, in our case, it is also like that. To find the angle, as mentioned earlier, the cosine of this angle equals the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. Here the adjacent leg represents the y component of vector b. The cosine of alpha is expressed as b sub y divided by the modulus of b. The modulus of a vector equals the square root of the sum of each squared component. Substituting the values, we find that the cosine of the angle is 0.31, resulting in an angle of 71.36 degrees. Now, we must calculate the force acting on each proton when it is at O. The expression for the magnetic force is shown on the screen. The problem statement provides the values for V, B, and the charge. The velocity V was specified to be in the direction of the OY axis. We substitute values and therefore, by solving this determinant, we obtain the force, the force we have also represented on the screen. It has component along the y-axis and component z. What have we seen in this class? Primarily, we've covered the magnetic force which is the effect exerted by the magnetic field on particles in motion. Additionally, we've learned that when a charged particle resides within a region encompassing both an electric and a magnetic field, its movement is governed by the Lorentz force. That concludes our discussion for today. Thank you and see you in the next class.